Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at the Fieldweld FW760. This is a full HD field monitor with a seven inch size display. It is very nice in some ways. It's got a very nice sharp screen, uh, really nice and detailed, uh, really, really nice and bright, uh, the brightest monitor that I've used. But saying that, keep in mind that I haven't used any really expensive ones. And it's got some nice advanced features. First of all, let's take a look at the outside here. You can see we've got a Sony battery. We can also plug in an external power supply. We've got the HDMI connection at the side, which I don't find ideal, but uh, it's fine, whatever. We've got the buttons and uh, controls here for the menu, and I find them really, really difficult to use. Maybe I'll get used to it. Uh, maybe some other people won't dislike these as much as I do, but uh, compared to something like this, I find them just completely unintuitive to use. Some things about it I do like though. I like that if you accidentally turn it off, you can turn it back on really quickly. And that is awesome because if you turn off some other monitors, you have to wait for like 20 seconds for it to come back on. Now this came with a one meter cable for plugging this into your camera, which is way too long, but whatever, you know, you can just buy another one if you want. And it did have both a micro and a mini HDMI. So that means that this will plug into both my Canon camera and my Sony camera. So that's nice. And then this does come with a hood. So you've got a smaller one that you can clip on and then there's a velcro one that you can attach onto the smaller one so a uh, pretty nice system pretty nice and quick to attach uh, i do quite like this hood system and um, yeah it's quite nice it's got this felt stuff on the inside to block reflections and this did come with a free little per gear cleaning kit now i don't particularly like the uh, ball head that came included with this but uh, yeah, I guess it works. It's just not one of the best ones I've seen. So let's take a look at the menu. We've got check field, and so we've got a gray, red, green, blue, and off, false colors. So on, off, uh, doesn't seem to be making a difference at the moment. And uh, the focus assist here is not bad. Nice and easy to see what you're doing. So that's it in low mode. And that's uh, quite nice focus peaking. Here, let's uh, open up the aperture a bit. This does look like really nice focus peaking to me. Um, I don't think it would be the best out there, but you know, it's it's not bad. Uh, it's very clear to see what's in focus and what's not in focus just by looking at the red color. So quite nice. We can change the peaking color, red, yellow, blue, white, and we can enable zebras. And then here you can see that areas over a certain brightness are showing up as a zebra. And then we have a setting for the zebra's exposure. So we can actually set this anywhere between zero and a hundred which is quite nice. Center marker, on or off. Then here in marker type, we've got a sort of a safe area display, or uh, you know, if you're gonna crop this, then it's giving you a preview of your crop. So then safe frames is more your sort of traditional title safe areas. And we have the option here called nine grid, which gives you this uh, grid over your screen so that you can zoom into a specific area of your image which uh, isn't something I would personally use, but maybe someone else has a use for that. And uh, also that nine grid doesn't seem to be something you can leave on. It's something that you can reach from the menu, but then when you exit, it turns off. So next up here, we have the scopes. So we've got a uh, quite a nice histogram there for your exposure. And we've got an audio meter. So here we've got audio levels, and these are a bit different, a bit louder than what is shown on the camera's own screen. Even though both of them are listening to the same microphone, this one is showing louder. So uh, I guess maybe that's a good thing. Um, I'm not sure if you're gonna wanna rely on this for your audio, but uh, it's a nice thing to have. Next up in the menu, we have our image settings. So here in the scan mode, you can see that we've got the option for overscan, which just zooms us in a little bit. So you can see that that's auto and full the same, but then over scan zooms it in just a little bit. Then we've got camera mode, which is for if you're uh, giving this a signal from a Canon camera that needs to be cropped a little bit, then it will do that. Then we've got the flip mode, horizontal, vertical, and off. Then we've got freeze, which is just going to pause the image. 
Then we have something here called P2P. Sorry guys, I have no idea what that is. Doesn't seem to do anything. So auto times four times nine times 16 and back to auto. And if we focus the camera, as expected, the image is not gonna be as sharp when we're uh, zoomed in. Then we have anamorphic with several different options. Then we have the color settings menu, which actually looks not bad out of the box. I didn't bother sitting down and trying to get this really perfect, but actually not bad out of the box. Um, very, very bright out of the box, set up to 100. And so you can dim that if you want. And I'm definitely gonna reduce the sharpness because there is a noticeable sort of over sharpening. So I'm just gonna set that to off. And once that's off, the image looks a lot nicer. Now, when you set that sharpness to off, it takes this from being a mediocre image quality to a really nice image quality. Then we've got the shortcuts for the different buttons, F1, F2, F3, and F4. And so you can change what those do. Then we've got the settings for the menu. So we've got language, transparency. We've got the duration for the menu to stay on. Then we've got the volume, this thing would output. And then we've got the mute, which I've enabled because this thing can sort of do a feedback loop from the camera. And we've got power mode, I've no idea what that does. And we have reset and software update. So as a conclusion, what I would say is this monitor is very, very nice for the price and gives you a lot of features and has a really nice sharp display, really bright and overall is actually really, really nice and has lots of advanced features while not costing too much. Actually, one of the more affordable ones considering the display quality. So I would say if you wanna get this, then yeah, it's a very, very nice monitor. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you found this useful. If you wanna support this channel, then you can get yours through the links down below from Amazon or eBay. And don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.